Hey, my name is Jared Moon, and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training, and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals, and they aren't getting achieved at a global gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here, and with me is Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? What is up? And we have Joel Hilliker. Did I get it right? Yeah. You got it right. <laughs> All right. All right, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, it's great to talk with you. And I love your, I love your setup. Where are you at right now? I'm at work. Uh, I've got my standing desk, and uh, I've got... Everything that I need within arm's reach here and a beautiful view out the window. That's awesome, oh, nice. man. Beautiful. I wish you could see it. Beautiful view. <laughs> uh, I love how many books you have on, on the shelves next to you <laughs> and a whiteboard. That's pretty much majority of the things that I need in my life to be happy. That's awesome, dude. All right, so, so give us a basic intro, who you are, what you do, and, and how you train. That would be awesome. Uh, well, Joel Hilliker, uh, I have been uh, training basically by myself for about 10 years. Um, I work out about three to five times a week. I've got pretty much everything I need in my own garage, but I also have access to the, uh, the, the gym where I, I actually work as a uh, part-time as a physical education instructor at a small private arts, uh, liberal arts college, Herbert W. Armstrong College in Edmond, Oklahoma. And we've got a, a really nice setup there as well. Um, we teach uh, basically the same kind of stuff that we that we do uh, with Garage Gym. I've, I've used uh, one man, one barbell type training with uh, some of the athletes there at the college. Um, and we do a lot of uh, CrossFit type work, uh, body weight, gymnastics and weightlifting. Um, and we we even uh, we even do uh, help kids get ready for marathons. We, we've, we've got quite a few students that we try to prepare for, uh, the half marathon and the full marathon. We have the Oklahoma city Memorial marathon every year. Uh, and, uh, so it's a whole lot of fun, but, uh, most of the time I'm, I'm by myself, uh, doing my training on my own. That's awesome, man. And, uh, where, where are you working right now? Where, where you said you're in your office. Is this, this yeah. is uh, this is on the campus at the college. Uh, we ha we have a hall of administration here, and so I have a bunch of other jobs too, like <laughs> doing the uh, uh, physical education at the college is like a a little kind of dessert that I get a couple times a, a week. Right. <laughs> no, I, I I definitely understand that. When I was uh, physical training was a big part of what I did in the Air Force, but it was only it was not my primary role for for the air force you know it was something i love to do and, and like to do but it wasn't the only thing i was allowed to do so i could i completely get that so what do you have at home in your your garage gym what kind of equipment uh what's your space looking like uh well you know what i what i did uh, early on i actually cut a hole in the roof of my uh <laughs> my garage in the in the ceiling and i uh i made a, a homemade rope um out of uh, uh you know it's just like a weave of uh, some really cheap ropes and I attached that at, so it's a it's about a 14 foot height that goes all the way to the ceiling uh, to the roof line in the in the um, garage I've got a pull-up bar that's up it's uh, about a foot off the ground that I can jump and and reach it I've got a bar that I've got a set of rings coming down from so I can do I can do muscle ups with the full kip and there's plenty of space above my head and I've got room to do uh, uh, wall ball shots up on the side there. So that's kind of like, there's a lot of space. It makes it so that I can do double unders and, and uh, jump rope work inside my garage. 
but I've got the squat rack and barbell and I've got a GHD machine and just stuff I've accumulated over the last 10 years. My homemade uh, wall ball that I made out of an old basketball mm -hmm. that I filled with sand. That's my favorite wall ball still to use it. I just love the feel of it. Um, so yeah, it's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of odds and ends. That's awesome. And so you twined your own rope and did, yeah. you, did you say that's like the first thing you did? Cause that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I would say so. There was an old CrossFit journal article that talked about how to make your own homemade rope and, uh, yeah, it works for me. That's pay, awesome. Pay attention to the fraying. I think, uh, Jared has a horror story about that. Well, that's, that was Texas sun. So I, I had, uh, <laughs> In, in Texas, I had the, the big like, Castro rig, so it had a 15-foot spot where I hung my rope from, but I never took it down. I just left it out there year-round, and about year two, the Texas sun had fried that thing, and I was about 10 feet up when the rope just snapped. Oh, wow. And uh, I landed straight on my back. Luckily, no serious injuries. Very luckily, really. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, but if you're keeping it in your garage, you should be, you should be good to go. Yeah, I think it's, it's in pretty good shape. That's awesome. So um, you said you're in Oklahoma, so probably similar real estate options as I had uh, in North Texas, which the garage the garages are pretty serious in that area. You know, lots of ceiling space, lots of room. Um, and if you're anywhere, I don't know about that specific area of Oklahoma, but typically if you're close to Tornado Alley, then uh, the garages are even more awesome, something I've noticed in that area. Uh, so do you have a pretty big space? Is it pretty large? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I definitely have no, no complaints. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good space to work out in. I do make good use of, I have this like industrial, uh, strength fan that I use and that is absolutely critical during the, the warmer months. It can really heat up around here. So, so how, I like having that. How far are you from Dallas? Just so I can get a perspective on maybe the temperature. Three hours. Okay. Yeah, three yeah. hours north. So it might even be hotter than Dallas. It is it pretty, uh, pretty hot there? Uh, we are experiencing uh, ridiculously hot May. We're already up into the 90s, which uh, it, it, it has me a little bit worried about where we're going <laughs> to end up later on in the summer. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of times it's triple digits for weeks on end, so... I was more thinking about the winters. I mean, that, that, that three hours difference from Dallas could be... I mean, you, you might even get snow up there. Yeah, we... Uh, the winters... Actually, lately they've been pretty mild, but when I need to uh, during the winter, I also have a pull-up bar just in my uh, in my house uh, next to the kitchen, so I can do quite a lot of work in the house when uh, it gets uncomfortable out in the garage. So I can bring you know bring a little bit of equipment in there and just uh, climate-controlled workouts are nice from time to time. From time to time, yeah, I could agree with that, and that's. There, there's like a sweet spot. So between, it sounds like, because uh, Wichita Falls, I don't know why, it's just ungodly hot in Wichita Falls, which is kind of almost the halfway point between Dallas and, and where you're at. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, the temperatures are just, just so brutal. Um, so you got the fan to kind of work around that. Um, how are the winters? Are they are they not too bad? Or Yeah, it can get pretty cold. But the other, uh, the other bailout option I have is to go over to that nice gym across the campus there and... Uh, that's always waiting for me if uh, if it gets too <laughs> uncomfortable. That's awesome. All right, so what was the I mean be, being at it for a decade, that's that's first off congratulations on consistency and sticking with it. So what was the big reason behind starting a garage gym a decade ago? Uh you know, I I was 36 and I I found myself uh just kind of starting to feel a little bit old. I found myself uh, just feeling lethargic. I, I started to wear baggier shirts, and I just I, I didn't feel like doing much. And I I thought, well, I guess this is kind of what happens when you when you get older. And uh, but then I had some friends who were doing CrossFit, and I just decided, well, let's just give it a shot. I had a friend of mine who um, he'd actually gotten certified, and he said, look, I'll just train you uh, for two or three dollars per session. Uh, if you just come, you know, I can teach you the movements, take you through the program. And, and so I started to do that and I'll tell you immediately it hurt like crazy. I mean, I, I just was, it was so uncomfortable. And I think for a lot of people, they would run in the opposite direction encountering that for whatever reason. I, I, I don't know why I had an opposite reaction. I just decided 
I never want to have to go through this again. This the the soreness and the pain that I experienced just in the first few weeks there. I just thought if I can get over this hump, then uh, I think I'll be good to go. And I just decided I'm I'm never going to not do this. I, I've and I've basically stuck with it, working out three to five times a week ever since then. So I I haven't had to go through that kind of a pain again, which uh, that's been a for whatever reason that's been a real motivator for me. When I, I'm working with a lot of the uh, the college students, I find, find, and I know that you you deal with this all the time too. How do you find a way to motivate people that um, don't necessarily feel like really compelled to to do it? Um, but for whatever reason, that worked for me. That's awesome, and the pain head running towards pain. That's uh, that's awesome, uh, and uh, you know, I, two first off, two to three dollars uh, a session is amazing so your, your yeah. friend uh he's uh it really helped you out i think that that's incredible but really cool that he did that uh yeah. and so what are some of your goals now uh i mean i'm sure they've changed over the years but what are your goals and, and some of your most favorite sure. accomplishments in being a garage gym athlete over the last 10 years um you know i i have had uh various goals over the years and i have found that those times where i've set a goal for myself especially if i like and preparing for a, an event like a marathon, that's that. Those have been the times where I've grown the most. Uh, the last few years, I've really focused on what has been my weakest area, which is strength. Like I tend to, I tend to be pretty good in the body weight and uh, just more of the aerobic end of things. But I'm just not very strong, so I've been focusing on that quite a bit. I, that's where I've. I've done most of your programs, Jared, is the the strength building programs, and it's helped me a lot. Um, I'm to a point now, I'm, I'll am i be 46 here in another month, and basically my goal is I, I don't have a whole lot of like really high-end uh, uh, fitness goals. I just want to be, I want to feel good. I want to have plenty of energy to do my work. I really love being able to work with younger people and show them that their body is capable of a lot more than they realize that it is. I really enjoy that. I mean, sometimes I, I look at them and I just feel like, man, I wish I, I wish I could know what they know, or at least have somebody working with me with a, you know, 21 year old body. That would just be amazing. Um, but I, I want to be able to play sports with my kids. I want to just enjoy uh, my family. And, and uh, so th that's basically what my goals are at this point. Very admirable goals. And, you know, setting up, setting yourself up for that, you know, not sometimes I think people can get overly focused on performance metrics. Like, no, I have to get to a 700 pound deadlift. And it's like, well, you know, the consequence of actually getting there could be you being broken later in life, you know, so mm -hmm. having, having, uh, you know, a lot of goals like you, you have now are, are amazing. Um, and so what were you doing? I guess, was it, was it nothing pre garage gym athlete, like pre 36, were you just like really not doing much or what? Yeah, I was, I was playing sports, you know, pick up basketball, that type of thing. And I had done, I had done a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of weightlifting before that, but really, uh, nothing too much. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a pretty, um, it, it was a very good lifestyle change, just getting into a consistent workout routine. Um, and I, I feel like it's, it's kind of, uh, there, the, the benefits of that have just been far beyond what I would have expected. And I think the consistency has just been, um, uh, what's, what's amazing to me is, even now being in my mid forties, I know that there's going to come a point where I'm going to stop, stop getting PRs on things. And I can find, I can see a couple of areas in my fitness that maybe are starting to taper off a little bit, but there are, there's quite a lot that I'm, I'm still getting PRs in things and I'm not even, it's not like I'm really trying hard to do that. I think it's just a matter of of staying consistent over time and it's made it so I, I don't know the body adjusts over time and what once seemed impossible becomes you know normal that's awesome and the favorite part my favorite part about that whole thing is you said uh, you know mid-30s starting to feel sluggish and you had the thought of like 
But this is just maybe the way things are. You get older, slower, you feel a little more lethargic. And that's most people just end there. They're like, yep, right. getting older. You hear that all the time from people like, oh, yeah, welcome to getting older. You know, it's like, well, actually, right. I'm going to try and do something to fix it. And you did, which the that mentality alone, I think, is is worth, you know, it, it's it doesn't have a price. You know, it, it's amazing that you, you have that and that you're willing to fight against uh, what you were feeling. So that's really awesome. So how do you yeah, like, I, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I, noticed, I noticed that culture in the military too, the people that are there a lot. And then, you know, people start to slack off more because, you know, PT standards go down a little bit. And I remember when I first, uh, went in, people told me like when they were older and their times were going down and stuff. And it just said, no, that's, that's how it is. But, you know, now doing the program that we're doing and stuff like that, even, um, people in our program that are 15 years older than me are, more ripped and beating me so it's like no it's not it's not that um you, you you can be way better than you are but like you just have to focus on different things like recovery that's yeah it. you know one thing that i i appreciate about your program is i i try i've tried other strength building programs and and there there is i have found that as my goals have changed as i've gotten older that I'm I'm really trying to uh, find that sweet spot of the right a level of intensity and stimulus, and not uh, going so far that I feel like I'm actually breaking myself down. And I really feel like what I a lot of what I've picked up from Garage Gym Athlete has just been very sustainable. I feel like it's something that I can I can keep on going. I don't feel beat up, um, and it's something that I could see myself continuing. You know even uh for the next 10 20 years yeah and that's uh that's what i'm always looking at fitness wise too and my programming and how i approach things is i have such a long-term view of things like if i wanted to hit a 100 pound pr in my deadlift i know how to do that and i know about how much time it's going to take me but i'm not really interested in that i'm, I'm really more interested in uh, a 10-year plan for my fitness and uh you know being able to make sustainable results while still having fun and i think that's a really uh good mindset to have for anybody who's getting into fitness or who's been in for a while like uh you know not going after the the next shiny object or just chasing something down like goals are good but uh the the more sustainable you can be i think the healthier you're going to be the more fun you're going to have and and to that point joe like uh, what you were saying about people in the military i know when i so i have three kids now but when i had my very first kid uh six years ago um william that that was a comment I got most often, and it was always so frustrating because everyone knew I worked out a lot, uh, and they were like, "Oh well, got the baby now, you know, fitness. See you later. You're not gonna mm. be, you're not gonna be working out anymore." And I always got so frustrated, and maybe part of the reason I I still uh, worked out in my garage and did so much is because I wanted to prove all those people wrong. I'm like, your mm. your mindset does not have to be how I am going to live my life because especially when you're when you're a lot younger and you, you actually think like oh no well, what do I actually have to stop working out now because I had kids and the answer is no your life is is whatever you want it to be now not only that but I I feel like cuz I my kids uh, my oldest I have 3 kids myself my oldest is 16 years old so I've been doing this for 10 years and so basically all my kids have ever known is dad works out, you know, That's awesome. and so they, uh, they do that. Like they've, they've all been very active and, uh, my both, I have two daughters, 16 and 14. They're both Irish dancers and strength is a really important component of their training. And so I'm able to help them and coach them, uh, on the lifts that they're doing. I have a son who's 10, who's like just a complete ball of fire of energy. I cannot <laughs> wear the kid out. And, uh, he, you know, I, I'm doing real simple stuff with him, but I'm I'm excited to just make you know I'm working with him on baseball and things like that. And as he gets older, we're gonna uh, be doing more. You know, I, I want him to be strong. I want him to feel uh, feel confident in whatever life throws at him. So that's definitely gonna be a part of uh, my parenting. What I can provide for them. That's that's awesome. And and so, how do you like training in your garage? You've been doing it for a long time, so you obviously like it. Uh, so I'll go with this two different directions with this training. Uh, what's your favorite thing about, or this question, what's your favorite thing about training in your garage and what's the biggest struggle in training in your garage? Uh, my favorite thing, or I guess what's best about it is, uh, there's no excuses. I mean, I, I do like working out with other people when I have the opportunity, uh, but training partners come and go. Uh, my garage is, 
it, it never goes away. It's mm -hmm. always there. Uh, so I, I like the fact that I, I think that's been the one thing that's enabled me to stay consistent. Like literally if I have 10 or 15 minutes, um, I can do something during that time. And I've at some point, some years back, I said, I'm not going to do this less than three times a week. And I, for whatever reason that there's enough flexibility in the schedule, it makes it possible for me to stick to that. I feel like I've always, I can always, you know, do 150 burpees or something like that. Um, the, the, the difficult thing for me has been, I would say, um, just not having eyeballs on me, uh, especially when I'm doing, uh, the power lifts and the Olympic lifting. Um, so that's been something where, uh, I've, Basically, anytime somebody's around me who has any knowledge at all, I'm I'm asking like, what do you see? What can I do better? Um, just because, just to go back to the sustainability factor, you know, I know that any any breakdown in form is gonna is gonna have a cost in the long run. So I'm just trying to, and late the last year or so, I've really just tried to focus in on dialing in my form. Um, eyeballs on you is just so helpful. And I feel like that's, that's where it gets a little, uh, uh, a little challenging. For sure. All right. So what's the hardest workout you've ever done? <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, I've done a lot, a lot of hard workouts. I do remember the very first time I did Murph and, uh, I, I remember finishing that last mile at the end and I came back uh, and, uh, fell down on my porch, just, uh, completely, completely gassed. And I think that the, the last thing that I remember was my dog coming up and he was licking my face and I think I fell asleep and took a nap. Uh, so, <laughs> but awesome. I, you know, I, I actually feel like in some ways, um, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of assault bike lately and oh, yeah. and i yeah. feel like anytime i get on that thing it's the worst workout i ever had i actually feel like just about w the workout that i'm doing on any given day is the hardest workout i feel like uh, i end up flat on my back on after most workouts and i it's kind of interesting to me because the the college students will come around and they'll see if if they happen to see me finish a workout they'll be like wow that one must have been really really awful and i said <laughs> you know really I, this is kind of the way I would love to see you at the end of <laughs> a lot more of the workouts that you're doing. It's it's awful if you push yourself, you know, but uh, yeah, it's whatever workout I'm doing. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, the assault bike, there's just something about it. There's just, it can destroy you. Absolutely. My, uh, my, my brother and his girlfriend recently visited a couple weeks ago and I have an assault bike and they had never done it. And they were like, Hey, let's, they'd asked me to make a workout up for them. So I put the assault bike in there. I was like, yeah, just, just do 20 seconds and then rest a couple minutes, then do it again. They do that about six times. And then I left and went on a, on a running day and I came back and he was passed out in the lawn. <laughs> she had gone. They both, I think he threw up and they were like, we only made it to four. We're done. I was like, all right. Yep. Sounds about right. <laughs> I, I don't, it doesn't make logical sense to me, but I, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Yeah. That's... Actually, uh, on one of the the programs that you had, Jared, you had us doing a lot of interval training on the rower, mm -hmm. and um, I, and you were you were saying just get one meter more than the last time uh, on every one of those workouts, and I that was awesome. I mean, I I gained a lot of respect for the rower, and just the fact that and the the assault bike is the same. It's the fact that they give you numbers, and and you can measure yourself against your own effort. And there's there's something really magical about that. Yeah, keeps those, you honest. Those computers. That's what we don't have. I mean, we there are treadmills, but the that's just not the same. Though those work output, like you can't do the same on the assault bike. I mean, I have a similar story to Joe. I don't know if I've ever told it on the podcast. We it was Christmas one year. My brother in law and uh, <laughs> two different brother in laws came in town, and and uh, my father in law for Christmas, and they wanted to do a workout. So we went through like mm -hmm. some. I always walk people through some easier stuff because I've had the experience more than one time where it was too hard. I, they got too sore right. or you know, I don't want to injure anybody. So it's you ask to do a workout with me and you don't work out that much. It's going to be pretty easy. Uh, but they were like, no, 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 dude. Like, come on. We know you do some crazy stuff. Like, let's I'm like, OK. And I don't, I don't remember if it was 60 seconds or three minutes. 
but I was just like, well, we'll just finish with like a 60 second max effort or three minute max effort air dine. And they were like, okay, yeah, that sounds good. And I was like, that's about as crazy as it really needs to get. And my brother-in-law, as gross as this may sound, uh, was actually pooping and puking at the same time in the bathroom. And it was the absolute worst thing. Uh, I have felt so, so felt so sorry for the guy. And if I gross anyone else, I do apologize. Uh, but it's just to, to illustrate how brutal those things are. So when he mentions how hard the workouts can be on those, it's, it's really pretty incredible. Now, in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Uh, well, you know, I, as far as working out goes, uh, for me, getting under a heavy barbell is, is, is really tough. And to do that over and over and over, um, I think probably one of the hardest things that I've done is it was the, it was the, the Mark Ripito starting strength, basically three sets of five reps going heavy squatting three times a week. Like I, I just found that so mentally taxing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but you know, just, just generally speaking, I I would say having a family uh, builds (laughs) a lot of mental toughness. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, the way to build mental toughness as far as I'm concerned is, uh, having a family and, uh, and praying. (laughs) Yeah, I, I love that man, and that's we from multiple uh, family men and women who've been on the podcast have we've gotten very similar answers to to it. Uh, children in general build a ton of mental toughness from the very start when they're born, and then there's a new mental toughness challenge almost every year as they develop into a new yeah. new age or like a new stage or whatever. So yeah, it it, it can be challenging. There's always something happening, <laughs> something that's throwing you off, something that you're having to face that you had to face before. Now, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, definitely a barbell. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. No question. There's so much you can do. Uh, if you could add one piece of equipment uh, to your gym, what would be at the top of your wish list? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, I think, I think a sled would be pretty, uh, pretty cool. And I realize th- those aren't, those aren't all that difficult to make. We actually have one at the college. Um, and I've, I've found that to be, uh, really, really challenging. Although actually an assault bike would be amazing. We, we have one at, we just got a couple at the college that I've been, I've been using, but having one, one of those would be, uh, would be phenomenal. Got to make sure the college kids get on them. The, the assault bikes. Yeah, we're going to be using it a lot this uh, this next <laughs> school year for sure. Yeah, and a similar stimulus there with a a sled. The only problem with the sled is they're hard to not hard physically hard to use, which they are, but just like like sometimes space wise, if you are at your garage gym and stuff, it's hard to find a place to use them. Some of them work on concrete, some of them don't really that well. And uh, hills. Yeah, hills. <laughs> yeah, pushing a sled uphill. I would love to. I mean. <laughs> I've never been in that situation, but that seems like that would be quite a push there. <laughs> All right. Now, um, it's, it's awesome that you've been training in your garage for 10 years, so I, I'm really uh, looking forward to your answer to this question. A lot of garage gym athletes out there listening, what is your best advice you have for them? Consistency. Uh, <laughs> like, like I said before, I, I, uh, I know that it's not going to happen forever, but it, but it's amazing to me how much when I, I actually, I track my workouts on, uh, on beyond the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I actually have 10 years of, of data on my own workouts. It's awesome. And it's a, it's just phenomenal to me, uh, how, how much looking back, I, like I'm constantly comparing myself to my, you know, 38 year old self, or my, my 39 and 40 year old self. And, uh, and there, there's just some things that I, I, I mean, I remember how challenging, uh, a certain workout was or what say maybe, uh, getting a certain time on a, on a benchmark workout, um, and going back and doing that again and, and seeing improvement, Um, I, I really, I, to me, if, if there's any, anything unique about me, it's that I'm not, 
I, I just don't feel like I'm doing anything particularly special. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a real good, uh, example of somebody who's, who's just sticking to a, a really uh, detailed program over a long period of time. I've done, I've done some of your programs. I did a 12 week strength program of yours and I've done one man, one barbell, several cycles of that. Um, but, but basically three to five times a week, that's the only thing that I've done consistently. Uh, and sometimes, I mean, if I don't feel like working out, it's not like the workout is super intense, but I just make sure that I get it done. Um, and so when I'm, when I'm still hitting PRs on some of those things, uh, to me, it's just like, man, I wish I could be this consistent in every single aspect of my life. Because to me, it's been just a huge lesson in the value in just putting in the work on a consistent basis over time. That's awesome, Joel. And I love that advice, uh, especially having, like I said, you've been doing it for so long and you've seen a lot of results in that. That's sometimes all that you need to be able to do is you said even some days, sometimes three days a week, sometimes it's only 10 or 15 minutes in a day, but every little bit adds up, especially that consistency, uh, you know, multiplied over a decade. And, and here you are, man. That's really awesome. And I really appreciate your time and for being on the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>